Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so I'm sitting here on the Skyrim Revisited page. We're going to do, we're going to start at section 2.2 .2, script extenders. In the last episode, I had installed Skyrim, the all four DLCs, and the creation kit. Uh, we hadn't run anything yet, um, and that's entirely on purpose. That's unusual for this video. I'm, and typically, I will run something just to make sure everything's working, but this last one, I purposely didn't run anything. Uh, I do want to say prior to the first video, I had completely wiped everything Skyrim off my computer, um, including any tools and, and stuff like that. Just about all the tools. There's one tool I think I left on because it was too general purpose to actually pull off, uh, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So yeah, uh, for the purposes of this video, this is a clean installation of Skyrim. And if you're following along, hopefully that's where you're at as well. If you did not start clean, I would really recommend that you do. Just wipe everything off. Um, keep your save games. Uh, I did keep my save games. I backed them up uh, just in case. But um, really, you should start clean as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, you're just asking for problems. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's let's continue on. The first thing that the the guide wants us to do is install a script extender. We're going to download the 7z archive version and install only certain folders. Now in my opinion guys, now I'm not positive about this, but I think um, in order to do this you're going to have to have 7zip installed already. Um, so I think he's slightly out of order here. Otherwise you're not going to be able to open this archive up. So my suggestion is to install 7zip before you do this part. If you don't already have a, a an archive tool available so we'll do that first. Uh, so I'm going to go to 7-zip version 9.20. Um, so the function of this tool is to open archives manually when not using other tools. It has the most modern compression screens and is free to use. So let's just pop over to 7-zip. So you want to get the one that's for your computer. We're going to use the version 9.20. Well, okay, I'm going to stick with the version that he recommends. Uh, you guys are welcome to go up here and do these ones. I'm not quite sure why there's two different sets. But grab the, the MSI, and then go ahead and save that. And then we'll come up to our downloads and run it. And so, welcome to the 7-zip 9.2x64 edition. Now, I'm, I've got a 64-bit operating system. If you have a 32-bit operating system, of course, you're going to want to use the 32-bit, this one right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and install it. So, you accept the terms of the licensing agreement. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it on the C drive. I don't typically like to do that, but we'll go ahead and do it. And you let it install. And hit yes. And there you go. That's all there is to it. So yeah, like I said, easy peasy, nothing to do. Nothing really big about that. So there we go. We've got 7-zip installed. And I think you need that before you can do this step. So we're going to go ahead and install the Skyrim script extender, SKSE. Now this is... Uh, this is critical, okay? This basically is needed for almost every mod we're going to install. So let's get going. So we're going to download the 7z archive version, install only the files to the main Skyrim folder. So we got three files. So let's go here. And we'll get the 7z archive version. That's the, the version he recommended. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then grab that. And that's not what I want to do. I hate that thing. Uh, let's see, let's go open it up in the, the folder. There we go. We could just extract it here, I suppose. Um, let's go ahead and do that. I'd actually like to get into the, into the folder itself. So there it is. SKSE1073. Now that is the, the version that he recommended, I believe. 1.73. So we're good. All right, this is what we want. Now, what he's asking us to do is to move these three files into the main Skyrim folder. So what he means by the main Skyrim folder is if you go to E drive and you go to your Steam library, Steam apps common, and we go to Skyrim. This is the main folder, OK? So we need to go SKSE1932 DLL, this guy right here. And I'm just going to move them. Um, like such, SKSE Loader, and SKSA Steam Loader. 
DLL. Okay, let's go in Skyrim. Let's make sure those are all in there. So we got SKSE 1932DLL, SKSE Loader. Uh, where's SKSE Loader? There it is. I got these by application. Okay, SKSE Loader.exe and then SKSE Steam Loader.dll. So those are the three files. So he says, do not install the scripts at this time. These will be installed later as part of the this create Skyrim revised profile section, so we're good. Okay, so moving on, we're going to do section 2.3 now, tools. Okay, we have quite a number of tools to, to install here, guys. Um, first of all, we've got to get this, this uh, decompiler installed, so let's do that. So we'll go download manual. Let's see here. Version 1.01. .01. He doesn't say whether to use, in particular, the 32 or 60 fit, 64 bit uh, version. So we'll go with the 64 bit version. So we'll go ahead and download that. Save file. Let that download. And there you go. Let's go ahead and open that up in here. And we'll open with 7-zip. Okay, so we're going to extract all this, and I don't want to put it here. So let's put it. Um, let's put it on the F drive. Oh no, not there. Not. Make a new folder. Let's just call it Champollion. Okay. And hit okay. There you go. So now if we go to the F drive, we should have a folder 64. Okay, so there you go guys. We got this all downloaded and set up. Let's go ahead and go back to our thing. Okay, so um, that's going to allow us to decompile PEX scripts to source code, um, and we'll need that later on for the merge plugin standalone. Okay, just like he says. All right, let's talk about uh, DDS optimizations. We're going to go get the version 080 pre release update 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the files. So there, there we go, 080, uh, pre-release update 4, okay? This was last updated in January of 2013. <laughs> he's, I don't know what he's waiting for, but okay. We'll go ahead and download that. Save file, just hit okay. So you can see, guys, these files are coming from Nexus mods, which is a, like a common place for Skyrim mods to come from, okay? So let's go ahead and open this up. And we'll go ahead and extract these. Uh, we don't want this here. We'll go back to the F drive. Let's check real quick his configuration in INI. He's got a configuration INI at link. So let's go ahead and take a look, see if there's any special instructions we need to know about. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, okay, this is all about. I, okay, so we just need to install. There's nothing special. So let's go ahead and on the F drive, we'll make a new folder. This is DDS optimization. Opt. Okay, and extract. So we'll wait for that to go. There you go. Okay, so since he's linked us to this configuration file, we will go ahead and run through this. I suggest that you guys read through this. Basically, it's all about what DDL, 
DDS Opt is. It's a basically a texture optimization tool. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. It, it's a, it, it can get complicated, but don't worry about it. Okay. So they're they're suggesting you don't install under Program Files x86 for the same reason that I I suggested the same thing. It's suggesting that you launch the game at least once while game configures the setters and some important registry values are initiated initialized. We're not going to do that. Make sure the the 2012 Visual C re, re, redistributable from Microsoft is installed on the system. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. If you need to, guys, it's here. Okay, you can just hit the download button and, and download it. I don't need it, so I'm not going to do that. Then we download the the DDS opt. We did that. Uh, Okay, create a shortcut to the executable. Okay, let's do that. So we will go to DS uh, script x, x64, um, create a shortcut, and we'll throw that onto the desktop here. And I'm just gonna rename this DDS opt. Okay, close that. Close all this stuff. We don't need all this stuff. Okay, uh, so we did that. Right click on the short shortcut, go to compatibility tab, and check the box labeled run this program as administrator. So let's do that. So we'll right click, we'll go to properties. Oh no, sorry, we'll go to run it as administrator. No. Did I miss a step? Um, compatibility tab, that's what I missed. Okay. We gotta go to the compatibility tab. I don't see compatible. Okay, properties. There we go. Compatibility tab. Run this program as administrator. Apply. Okay. There you go. Let's drop you up here so we can see you. All right, guys. So um, we got all that. Um, this ensures is uh, okay. If an error occurs stating that X days for his DLL is missing when not the first time, then install or reinstall DirectX to resolve. So again, this is another tool. Okay, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the the, the installer part of this thing. So this will take you to the um, the installer that you need, okay? Um, if you need it. Uh, I happen to know I already have DirectX installed, so um, no worries. Okay, so be sure to update to the latest version of DDO. DDS opt INI and place it in the same folder as the executable overwriting the older version as file. The DDO opt in INI file is in the appendix is you to configure to go blah blah blah. Okay, so let's do that. That should take us over to Nexus, I believe. No. Nope. Okay, that's actually a manual thing. Okay, no worries. We'll grab this. So let's grab all this. Copy that. And we're going to go into DDS opt INI, uh, which again should be on the, where did I put it? The F drive, didn't I? There it is. We're going to hit Control A, Control Paste, Control V, like such. and save and close. There you go. So we now have an updated version of the configuration file. Okay. Um, we'll come back to this part. Okay, this is actually what you do when you start to, to actually run the program, okay? So I think we're gonna stop there as far as that goes. Okay, because that's what all we want to do is the configuration and INI part, which is what we did. Initial configuration and the INI. All right, so we're good. And we managed to do what? <laughs> we did the script extender, we did 7-zip, uh, we did the, the decompiler, we did DDS up. I'll perhaps stop here, guys, because I don't want to, again, I don't want this video starting to get too long. Um, and we'll continue on next time with with uh, more tools. So uh, we'll stop here, 
and pick this up in the next video. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks a lot.